the Khufu Pyramid, the last seventh wonder of the world, still standing. Five million tons of stones erected 4,500 years ago. It is the highest, biggest and most enigmatic of all pyramids. In 2007, French architect Jean-Pierre Houdin revealed his theory to the world, solving the mystery of its construction. How did the Egyptians manage to build this 146 meter high pyramid without wheels and iron? According to the French architect, they built two ramps. The first, an exterior ramp, stood 43 meter high and was used to carry up the biggest stones and build the first two-thirds of the pyramid. Then, this exterior ramp would have been dismantled and its stones brought in through an internal ramp which snaked its way up to the top. How did they manage to build a king's chamber, located 43 meter high, with granite beams weighing up to 60 tons? Jean-Pierre thinks they used the Grand Gallery as a huge counterweight system to lift these beams to such a height. During a fact-gathering mission out in the field, Jean-Pierre and his friend Egyptologist Bob Breyer looked for new clues and evidence to bolster his theory. Jean-Pierre, I understand the roll is rolling, the weights are sliding, but is there any evidence that this room was actually used? I think if you have a closer look to the bench on the vertical fence, yeah. we will find some grease, some scratch, so the trolley, when it goes up and down, they had to lubricate it. They put grease, yes. and then by going up and down, it scratches. And sometimes uh, the trolley was uh, shaking a bit. Shaking a bit. Uh huh. Just a small yeah. stone and the scratch. No, pretty good. It looks like it was used. Bob Breyer got special permission to climb the pyramid, and he visited an intriguing room on the northeast edge of the pyramid. Could it be the remains of the internal ramp? A room where the blocks would have been turned to continue to the next section of the ramp. So far, there is a lot of evidence to back Jean-Pierre's theory. Some of the most important being the result of a microgravimetry survey done in the 1980s. Thousands of measurements were taken at a time, both inside and outside the pyramid. They do indeed show differences in density within the pyramid, which look uncannily like Jean-Pierre's helicoidal ramp. Also, a team of engineers from Dassault Systems spent two years testing his theory with scientific 3D simulation. Everything about it works. Nothing in his theory defies the laws of physics. It could have very well been passed like that, vis-à-vis of the mechanics. Tout colle, c'est vraisemblable, ça tient la route. Now, a scientific mission using infrared thermography technology is being proposed to Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities. La mesure qu'on vise maintenant, ce sont des indices directs. Donc si on montre une image avec le tracé des rampes, plus personne ne doutera de l'existence de celle-ci. But perhaps there is more to discover. In January 2011, Jean-Pierre Houdin revealed the second part of his theory. According to him, a secret passage in the king's chamber could lead to antechambers, where Khufu's funerary furniture 
would still be standing untouched for 4,500 years. Many intriguing clues have allowed him to advance this new hypothesis. To quote just a few, the high number of relieving chambers on top of the king's chamber would in fact protect these hidden rooms from the weight of the stones situated above. Air shaft corridors that bent in strange ways for no logical reason if not to avoid the secret passage. Clues in the king's chamber itself with this intriguing stone that bears no weight. In the 19th century, looters already noticed this anomaly and dug a hole beneath the stone to no avail. The secret passage might not be beneath, but behind. Priests would have used the passage to carry the pharaoh's remains to his final resting place. If Jean-Pierre Audin is right, the interior architecture of Khufu's pyramid would have followed the pattern of previous pyramids made by Khufu's father. Today, science has the technology to provide concrete answers in non-invasive ways and find out just how accurate Jean-Pierre Audin's theory is. An authorization from Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities is still needed to be able to check his revolutionary theory. If Jean-Pierre Audin is right, it will shed new light onto the true genius of ancient Egyptians and it will be the most important discovery since King Tut's tomb.